Hello and welcome. In the past, we have spoken about aviation pioneer Charles Lindbergh, his flight across the Atlantic in 1927 in the spirit of St. Louis was the equivalent of man's first step on the moon. He wasn't prepared for the unprecedented adulation. The unrelenting public attention caused him and his family to move to the UK in 1935. He bought a small island off the coast of France and they moved there. Lindbergh travelled to Germany several times at the request of the United States military, anxious to see what Germany was up to. He admired German engineering and organisation. He was the first American to examine Germany's newest bomber, the Ju-88, and Germany's frontline fighter aircraft, the Messerschmitt Bf 109. The American ambassador to Germany hosted a dinner for Lindbergh with Germany's Air Chief General Field Marshal Hermann Goering and three central figures in German aviation, Ernst Heinkel, Adolf Bumacher and Willy Messerschmitt. At this dinner, Goering presented Lindbergh with the Commander Cross of the Order of the German Eagle. Following Hitler's invasion of Czechoslovakia and Poland, Lindbergh opposed sending aid to countries under threat. He equated assistance with war profiteering. Lindbergh returned to the US in 1939 at the urging of General Hap Arnold to help evaluate the US's Air Corps readiness for war. Lindbergh gave a nationwide radio address in which he called for isolationism and indicated some pro-German sympathies. He made anti-Semitic insinuations about Jewish ownership of the media saying, we must ask who owns and influences the newspapers, the news pictures and the radio station. We cannot allow the natural passions and prejudices of other peoples to lead our country to destruction. The Roosevelt administration is the third powerful group which has been carrying this country toward war. Its members have used the war emergency to obtain a third presidential term for the first time in American history. They have used the war to add unlimited billions to a debt which was already the highest we have ever known. And they have used the war to justify the restriction of congressional power and the assumption of dictatorial procedures on the part of the president and his appointees. The power of the Roosevelt administration depends upon the maintenance of a wartime emergency. The prestige of the Roosevelt administration depends upon the success of Great Britain, to whom the president attached his political future at a time when most people thought that England and France could easily win the war. The danger of the Roosevelt administration lies in its subterfuge. While its members have promised us peace, they have led us to war, heedless of the platform upon which they were elected. In October 1939, following the outbreak of hostilities between Britain and Germany, and a month after the Canadian declaration of war on Germany, Lindbergh made another nationwide radio address. He criticised Canada for drawing the Western Hemisphere into a European war simply because they prefer the crown of England to the independence of the Americas. Lindbergh went on to further state his opinion that the entire continent and its surrounding islands needed to be free from the dictates of European powers. In late 1940, Lindbergh became the spokesman of the non-interventionist American First Committee. He spoke to overflow crowds at Madison Square Garden and Chicago's Soldier Field. There are still interests in this country and abroad who will do their utmost to draw us into war. Against these interests, we must be continuously on guard. 
But American opinion is now definitely and overwhelmingly against our involvement. In April 1941, he argued before 30,000 members of the America First Committee that the British government has one last desperate plan to persuade us to send another American expeditionary force to Europe and to share with England militarily, as well as financially, the fiasco of this war. In his 1941 testimony before the House Committee on Foreign Affairs opposing the Lend-Lease Bill, Lindbergh proposed that the United States negotiate a neutrality pact with Germany. At an America First rally in September 1941, Lindbergh accused three groups of pressing this country towards war, the British, the Jewish, and the Roosevelt administration. Roosevelt disliked Lindbergh's outspoken opposition to his administration's interventionist policy, saying, when I read Lindbergh's speech, I felt that it could not have been put better had it been written by Goebbels himself. Lindbergh's friendship with the automobile pioneer Henry Ford was well known. Ford owned the anti-Semitic newspaper The Dearborn Independent. On December 7, 1941, America declared war on Imperial Japan and the rest is history. There's something I want to talk to you about, something very secret. Um, would it be easier if I wasn't here? <laughs> Lindbergh, the family man, fathered seven children to three German women between 1958 and 1967, while still married to Anne Morrow. For me, Charles Lindbergh is a man of complicated beliefs who finished up on the wrong side of history. Thank you for watching. Comment below. Like and please subscribe to promote content.